Hey guys and gals and welcome back to my channel. This video is for anybody who's ever accidentally caught a muskie while not fishing for them or uh, a beginner muskie angler or if you are if you've been muskie fishing for a while but you just want to get better at knowing how to safely handle the fish for yourself and for the fish. Um, this is going to be part of a series of many more videos to come on basically muskie 101 and I just want to get right into it because I felt like this is the most, most important video to start with because once you catch a muskie, you need a baseline knowledge, whether you're fishing for them or not, on how to handle them. So I've got a little, um, if you see me looking down, I've got a little list of stuff that I am going to go through. And uh, with that being said, let's jump right into it. So um, let me start out by saying I'm guilty of mishandling muskie, especially when I first started fishing for them. Uh, the first uh, muskie I caught while fishing for him off a boat was uh, at Cave Run Lake. And I definitely, it was the wrong time of year. I think it was like late May. And it was too hot to be fishing for him, but nobody told me that. So, uh, you know, and if you look at my old videos, I used to drag muskie up on the bank. Um, I definitely didn't know how to hold them. But I really didn't have anybody to talk to uh, to figure out this stuff. So if you're one of those people and you just don't know, I mean, now's the time to start learning and just be open to advice. Um, now, muskie are a little bit more fragile than your average fish you're going to catch. They are uh, almost, I think of them like a trout. If you fish for trout and you know how fragile trout are, muskie are the same way. And if you don't know how to handle them, you can hurt yourself and the fish pretty easily. Uh, and a lot of times if you mishandle a muskie to a, a pretty, you know, pretty badly, the fish will swim off, but it'll die shortly after. Uh, so even catch photo release intentions can be fatal for the fish if you don't know what you're doing. So uh, today we're going to be talking about four main things, and I'll look at them real quick. Water temperature, your mentality, handling, and releasing the fish. So the first thing I want to talk about is water temperature. Now I'll make a separate video on this subject um, in and of itself later on, but the main takeaway I want you all to have is don't fish for muskie in hot water and hot weather. Uh, the maximum water temperature you want ever when you're fishing for muskie is around 78 degrees. Any higher than that and the chances for a fish dying after you catch it can go way up. Now, if you're fishing a river or you're fishing a creek, you know, you're fishing right below a spillway, the water is going to be cooler. Uh, if the water is moving fast, it's releasing more heat, and a lot of times if it's coming out of a dam, they're pulling from a, a deeper lake level. So the water coming out of the dam could be like 65, 68 degrees, and it'd be August. It just depends on where they're pulling the water from, and also depends on the dissolved oxygen in, in the water, which is a lot greater below a spillway. Uh, and creeks, especially the creeks around here in eastern Kentucky, they are usually karst fed, uh, cave, you know, cave and spring fed. So the water coming out of some of these creeks, I mean, it'll freeze you to death in the middle of summer if you're, you're wading some of these creeks. So uh, definitely cooler water is where you want to be fishing for muskie. The second thing I want to talk about is your mentality when you catch a muskie. Whether you meant to catch a muskie or not, once you've landed it, you should move with a purpose. Everything you do should be quick and straight to the point. You only need to remove the fish from the water to take a picture or a video. Uh, most of the de-hooking or hook cutting, whatever you're going to do to release the fish can be done while the fish is still in the net or still in the water. Now, a lot of people are afraid of muskie. They just don't know what parts can hurt them and to them it's just a big scary monster with teeth and they see people get cut up by them and they're just like, ah, cut the line or whack it over the head, believe it or not. You know, some of the people around here, they'll take a muskie, hit it in the head or, you know, a lot of people will even shoot them and that way they can cut the line and just be done with them. When I hear stuff like that, it just makes me sad for the fish because honestly, if you have the right tools 
and you just leave the fish in the water for a second, you can literally unhook these things and never un never hurt yourself in the process. So uh, yeah, move with a purpose and you know only remove the fish when it's ready to come out of the water for a picture for five, 10 seconds max, put it right back in the water and you, you should be fine. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is actual musky handling where you put your hands on the fish, how to handle the fish, stuff like that. So uh, you'll see me referring to this musky replica. This is not a skin mount, this is a replica. And also to my clipboard here, I've got a lot of stuff wrote down um, that I wanna refer to, so to make sure I don't miss anything. So the first thing is, when you get a musky and it's landed, it's in the net, it's in the water, whatever, let it calm down, let it breathe. Uh, I liken it to, say you just ran a 100 yard sprint and at the very end of the sprint, you're out of breath, you're sitting there, you're sweating, you're feeling like you're gonna die. The, the last thing you wanna do is hold your breath for what, 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how you good, good you are on, on unhooking a muskie. Well, a muskie, they are notorious. Number one, look at them. It's a large predator, and they rely on speed and sheer aggression when they ambush something. So you, you fight a muskie for, let's say, 30 seconds. It's sitting there fighting its heart out. Then you get it uh, get it in. The last thing you wanna do is just rip this thing out of the water and, and let it not breathe. So leave it in the water. Let it sit there and recover, calm down. That'll only help you and the fish as this process goes on. Now, um, the one of the biggest things I wanted to talk about is you'll see anglers uh, that don't really know what they're doing, vertically hold a fish. Now, when you vertically hold a bass or something, number one, you're holding it by its jaw. Number two, uh, bass don't get 20, 30, 40 pounds. So there's so much weight on this fish to just hold it vertically by the gills and hold it straight up and down. You don't want to do that. I mean, there's people out there that think, uh, well, where's the scientific proof that that actually hurts the fish? But common sense tells you if you've got your thumb crammed up in its gills, that whole fish's weight is going to pull on its gill plates and everything attached to it. And it's just the organs and the way everything's situated in its body. It's not good on a muskie to hold it straight up and down by its gills. Number two, you will slice your hands up pretty bad. And I'll get to that here in a second. But... You just don't want to vertically hold a muskie up and down by its gills. Uh, another big thing I see in Kentucky, and it's hard to believe, I know if you're watching this and you're from the north, but a lot of the old the old timers or somebody that doesn't know what they're doing will, will preach, hey, stick your finger in their eyes. If you hold them by the eye sockets, they won't thrash around a lot. Now, it kind of goes without saying, and I'm not going to say anything derogatory here, why that fish will quit thrashing around a lot, but it is horrible on any fish to gouge its eyes and then support its whole weight with its eye sockets. Please do not do that. Please do not do that. Uh, now, vertical holds, you're gonna, you, you kinda have to do a, min, a mini vertical hold when you're pulling the fish from the water and out of the water, especially if you have a long ways to go to get to the water. Now, if you're bank fishing, or you know, you're in a boat that you can kind of lay on your belly and grab the fish, it's one thing. But you're gonna have to grab that fish and for a second, you're gonna vertically hold it and pull it out of the water by its gills, but then your other hand should be coming right up underneath and supporting that belly. And the same thing when it goes back down into the water. Once you've got a certain amount of the fish into the water, then you can turn this hand loose and let the water support the back of the fish while the rest of the fish goes into the water but you definitely don't wanna be lugging these things around by their gill plates, doing vertical holds, pulling them up out of the net and dropping them right back down in the water. It's not good for them. We're, we're all guilty of it to some extent. The only thing you can do here is kind of mitigate that. Um, now, your hand and thumb placement uh, and, and is something that I only recently figured out probably a year and a half ago. I, I was doing it wrong the whole entire time. And I'll show you here in a second what I'm talking about. Now let me show you before I start telling you how to hold a muskie, what parts can hurt you. Obviously the teeth. This thing is nothing but a hard bony mouth full of teeth. But the other hidden danger 
that not only will cut your hands but cut your line uh, a lot of the times are these not the gills but the gill plate covers in a muskies uh, right around the gills here those things are sharp as razor blades so what you want to do is when you go to hold a muskie and I can't really do it to the full extent because this is a replica I can't get my hands all the way up in there but you go between the gill plates and the outside of the fish's mouth your thumb, your hand will go all the way up in there. If, the, if I could get my hand in there, my fingers would go all the way up to right there, okay? And my thumb would be on the outside right here. And so on the inside of the fish's mouth, my fingers would be right there and my thumb would come together right there, right there. Okay, so imagine my fingers are up in that fish's mouth and all I do is I take and I grab and squeeze. That's all you want to do. These musky have a handle built in and that's actually pretty safe and you just your your thumb and your finger will meet right there and you just squeeze. Now once that's done you want to take your other hand and slide it up under the belly of the fish and I'll do another demonstration where I'm actually back in front of the camera. But you want to slide your hand back on the fish so you've got your hand up in here and then the other hand supporting the belly so what that's gonna look like is once I've got my hold on the jaw my other hand is gonna be slid about right there now if you hold the fish too far back what this fish is gonna do is it's going to bow really heavily in the middle and that's just not good for their back so you want to support their stomach I'd even hold it kind of somewhere up in here. It's just hard to hold a replica, but you, and you want kind of to look like that. And another thing is a lot of people are like, well, what hand do I use for what side of the face of a muskie? Now, this is a replica, so the side face of me isn't completely finished, uh, so I won't show you that. But uh, there's a good YouTube channel out there by Jeff Contreras, and I'll link uh, his channel or the video in the description. But think right hand on the right cheek of the musky and if you're going to hold the left cheek of the musky use your left hand so the way it's going to look is uh right now the musky i want to show you the side so i'm going to use i'm going to show you this side so i'm going to use my left hand for the left left cheek which is pointed towards me and the right hand is going to support but if i were to flip this musky and have the head the other way my right hand is going to be holding the cheek and my left hand is going to be back here supporting. So that's how you do it. Uh, and make sure this hand is supporting the stomach somewhere in here. This is a, I've got a board back here, so I can't really get my hand up under there. But you want your hand to support the musky like that. So you've got a jaw hold and you've got a stomach hold. Now, a lot of people kind of get freaked out if the fish starts flopping around. They're like, uh, those gill rakers are going to get the back of my hand, or my back of my fingers if the fish starts flopping around. If you've got a good tight hold, you know, if your hand, this part of your hand's in the fish and this is your thumb on the outside of the jaw and you're really pinching and you've got a pretty good hold on the belly, that fish will flop and you may feel those gill rakers go against your hands, but the only time it's really going to get you good is if you turn loose and they actually, you know, the full force, the weight of the fish goes against the back of your fingers. You may get cut a little bit. Um, if you're worried about that, I would suggest you use some sort of Kevlar or cut resistant gloves for the, the hand that's going to be you know, near the mouth. But other than that, you should be pretty straight. Um, now, in a lot of my videos, you'll see me, um, in one of my past videos, my thumb will come out for a second. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure your thumb has constant contact with that jaw and you're pressing into where you feel your other finger and you've got that jaw on a lock. The reason I say that is I've seen some videos where a, a guy will be handling a muskie and then his thumb will come up for a second and then when he goes to put it back in, he's got it on the inside of its mouth. You don't want to do that. And also be aware of any um, you know old snaggletooth muskie that have teeth pointed straight out. You know These things get hooked all the time and every now and then a tooth will grow outwards instead of in, instead of in its correct place. My, my buddy Adam knows all about that. Now once you've got that grip, you've got your fingers, 
these fingers up in the actual side of the jaw, you know, on the outside of the gill plates and inside the jaw and your thumb on the outside and you've got that clamp and you're sitting there holding that musky handle as I call it. If the fish starts to flop, you're, you've got two choices. You can either hang on and be confident with your grip or if you think that, you know, if your confidence level isn't high and you think like it's getting away or it's gonna hurt me, then you turn it loose and let it flop into the water. Um, but if you're half-hearted about your grip at all and a fish starts flopping around, um, that's a recipe for somebody, either the fish or you, uh, to get hurt. So be confident with your grip and it's only gonna take, you know, practice doing it. Uh, now, I, I had mentioned using gloves. If you're gonna use gloves, I would recommend some sort of cut resistant glove. Uh, some guys and gals say don't use gloves, some say do. I have seen evidence for both, but one thing's for sure, a glove will protect your hand better than just your hand being bare. Uh, now if a lot of people will say use boga grips, use some sort of fish grip and, and grip the muskie's mouth and once you've got the muskie's mouth gripped, you know here's my, my fish grip then they'll just hold the muskie up by the fish grip by itself. They'll just be like, oh, there it is. If you're gonna use a bugger grip, and you, you, know, you absolutely don't wanna do the hold I just taught you, don't just use the grip to hold the fish. You have still got to support the belly. I mean, that, that will always be a thing. Um, so a lot of people, you'll see a bugger grip picture of a muskie, and they'll just be hanging it straight up and down off the grip. Don't do that. You still have to do this. <clears throat> now another thing, when you catch a muskie, muskie like to roll. They like to flip. They are very acrobatic. And a lot of times your line will roll up right around the gills. And when they do, the line can be up in the gills. It can be over the gill plate. You can have hooks that will go penetrate the gill plate, hit their skin, and now all of a sudden they've got their gills pinned shut. Or they'll have, here's another thing line if you have a net or line it will find that spot right there on the outside where this this upper lip comes down always check for that kind of stuff because that all that's going to do is make it harder for them to breathe and harder for you to get the fish released so a lot of times your problem areas are going to be the snout that they, they will wedge their their snout into a hole in the net or they'll get that part in the net or they'll get something down here hung up in the net. Uh, all of these are things that you just need to pay attention to that are just gonna help you in the future to get a muskie released quicker. Now, if your fish is in kind of bad shape um, and you know, you've taken your picture and you put it back in the water but it's kind of trying to belly up or whatnot, uh, I recommend, this is a personal preference for me, but putting it back into the net that way it's not just gonna belly up, you know, kind of roll down and die in the bottom or try to belly up and float downstream or wherever I'm fishing. If it's in the net, I can control it, I can stay with it, I can revive it. Um, that's what I do. So if you can, uh, and you know, your fish isn't looking good, I recommend just kind of sliding it back into the net and letting it chill in the net and, you know, working with it from there. Don't just toss it back into the water and hope it'll survive. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the actual release of the fish. Now I mentioned before the vertical lift to and from the net or to and from the water. You just want to make sure that you're not um, hurting the fish by just doing a strictly vertical hold, not holding the stomach when you can, and the same thing for putting it back in the water. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but when you get a fish in the water and you're sitting there and you're holding its tail, don't push it and pull it through the water. What you want to do is, if you're in a lake and you can't really tell where the current's going, just put the nose into the wind. Okay, so if the wind's blowing at me, point the nose that way. And, you know, or if you're in a river or a creek, point the nose upstream. Let the water flow over its gills. If I'm the fish, the water's coming towards me. That way the fish can breathe properly and it's not sitting there. You've got, you know, you're pulling it through the water and you've got, you know, water coming back up through the gills like that. You don't want any of that uh, nose upstream or nose into the wind. Now, another big thing that kind of goes with all of this is muskie have a protective coat of slime. If you've ever caught one that's got a huge coat of slime, you'll notice it's sitting there dripping 
as you're taking the picture, you'll see huge lines of this like snot, like slime. That is to protect them from, well, to protect them from a number of things. So the, the less you handle the fish or the less you scrape that slime off, the better. So just keep that in mind when you're handling these fish. Um, and make sure that when you're releasing these musky, you're not just giving them a toss, like a football toss, like you would like an eight inch smallmouth back into the creek. You're taking this fish, you're taking it down into the water, and you're releasing it in the water. Don't just toss a muskie and just let it belly flop. That's, that's horrible on them. So have some respect for the fish. You, you know, these things are fun to catch and they're a great resource, but don't throw them back into the water like a football. Um, and make sure once you release the muskie that you kind of hang around in the area for a little bit to make sure it swam off. Now, obviously, if you know you caught a muskie and it took you 20 seconds to get it in and 30 seconds to get it out of a net, and you know you, you saw it just bolt off, okay, you don't have to spend 10 minutes in a spot making sure it's okay. But if it's early May and you've had a warm spring and the water temps are like 75, 74 degrees, and a muskie took a bait too deep or whatever, and the fish was kind of you know wonky, then hang around, make sure that fish is okay, and help it as much as you can. Unfortunately, every now and then, everybody does it, you're going you're gonna to accidentally kill a muskie. But just hang around and nurse one back to health if you can. Now, obviously, this isn't everything. You know, there's, there's probably a few 20, 30 year veterans of muskie fishing who are like, hey, you forgot this, you forgot that. But what I've just told you are some basic tips that if you, you follow them and you try to respect the fish, you're gonna be pretty successful at not getting injured by a muskie and not hurting the fish that you catch. Uh, because a lot of times people will say, well, it's, it swam off strong, it swam off strong. But I would, to those people, I would suggest that you look up delayed onset fish mortality, I think is what it's called. Basically, it's a fish swimming off and then dying where you can't see it. Uh, and, you know, I saw a post the other day about, uh, you know, Somebody was holding a fish by the eyes, and he was pretty cool. He was he was very open and receptive to advice, but you know he's like, hey, they swam off strong, but likely when fish are handled by their eyes, and you've got your thumb and your finger in their eye socket, and you're kind of gouging it out, you've damaged that fish's vision, and now it swims off and it can't see as good, it can't hunt as good. You've damaged something up in here that sets up infection, whatever the fish is going to have a hard time living after that. So just because something swims off strong doesn't mean it's going to live or live the best life it had before you caught it. Um, now, I try to improve every trip. You'll look at some of my old videos and look at who I am now, and you'll see that I've come a long way. But I'm still not the perfect muskie angler, especially being a bank fisherman. So I'm always going to be improving, and I hope that after watching this video, you will strive to become a better angler and uh, improve yourself. That way we can continue sharing in the, this great resource known as musky because they are a blast to catch. Um, now, I am going to be posting a few more video, quite a few more videos on musky 101, so make sure you check back to my channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned for those because I've got things like what tools to use, what nets to use, what gear to use, water temperature, stuff like that. So if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel uh, and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and you agreed with it. Uh, and if you got anything to add, please do so constructively in the comments below. And I really hope this helped you all out as uh, musky anglers or future musky anglers. Thanks for watching you all.